Everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Over the past few months, I've been asked pretty well every day if I could do a video on having PFSense in front of my UDM Pro. And today we're going to do a video on just that. It's a bit of a weird configuration and I'm sure there's other ways of doing it, but this is the way that I would do it. But if you need your UDM Pro to act as your controller, this would be the way to do it. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire us for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at mactelecomnetworks. And if you want to support the channel, we do have memberships available now. You need to go to one of my videos and click on the join button. That will make sure that we keep this channel ad free. First, let's look at the topology of how everything is connected. At the top, we have my internet connection and that's going down into the WAN 2 RJ45 port of my NetGate 6100. From the NetGate 6100 LAN 1 port, that's going to the WAN port of my Unified Dream Machine Pro. With the UDM Pro, it can't be put into bridge mode, so we can't just pass IPs along to it. In the WAN port, it only allows us to do one VLAN if we needed to. So what we need to do, we need to take another connection from the NetGate 6100 and then plug it into our UDM Pro. So on LAN port 3, I'm connecting it to my UDM Pro on port 1. And this will pass all of our VLANs that we need it to. Off my UDM Pro in the SFP2 port, it's going down to a USW Pro 24. And we'll be hanging a U6 light off of that just to give us a couple wireless networks. And here's the different subnets that we'll be creating. We're going to be creating some within our UDM Pro. So we'll do the device management, which is just our native VLAN on our UDM Pro, which is 192.168.1.1 slash 24. Then we'll set up a camera network and I'll hook up a G3 flex to my 24 port PoE switch. And that will be in 192.168.210.1 slash 24. Since we'll be doing some subnets within the UDM Pro, we'll also have to create some firewall rules in our UDM Pro. It all won't be done within our PFSense. And in our PFSense, if we want to have more control of certain subnets, we would create those there. So we'll have a staff network of 192.168.20.1 slash 24 in VLAN 20, and then we'll have a guest network of 192.168.30.1 slash 24 in VLAN 30. We'll have to create firewall rules within PFSense to block these from communicating to one another. And another reason you may want to put a PFSense in front of your UDM Pro is, is to do things like load balancing, policy-based routing, or do a whole home VPN. So within our UDM Pro, we also need to create VLAN only networks for these two PFSense networks. So first let's start over on my PFSense. And I've already done the initial setup on the PFSense to get me internet access. If you haven't done that yet, I do have other videos showing you and I'll put those in the description below. And the same thing goes for the UDM Pro. It's up and running and connected to the internet. But we'll look over at my interfaces and we could see that my LAN is connected at 192.168.111.1. And then we have my WAN connected at 192.168.10.122. This is just a private address connecting to my other UDM Pro. So we will actually have triple NAT, not double NAT. So looking back at our diagram, these are the networks that we need to create. So we need to create the staff network VLAN 20 and then the guest network of VLAN 30. So we'll go to my PFSense. So we'll scroll up on the PFSense, go to interfaces and then assignments. From the assignments, we'll click on VLANs and then we'll add a VLAN. The parent interface that I'll be using is my LAN 3 port. So that's going to be on IGC2. I'll give it a VLAN ID of 20. We'll call it staff. And then we'll press save. Now we need to do the same thing for our guests. We'll add the VLAN. It will be under IGC2. So this is our trunk port going to port 1 of our UDM Pro. So we'll put that on VLAN 30. We'll call it guest. Now we need to go over to interface assignments. Under the available networks, we need to click on the drop down menu and then we need to select VLAN 20 and press add. We need to do the same thing for VLAN 30. And we can see that they both showed up here, one for OP7 and one for OP8. So we'll click on OP7, we'll give it a new name of staff, we'll enable the interface and we'll give it an IPv4 configuration of static IPv4. We'll scroll down to the configuration and we'll give this the subnet of 192.168.20.1 and it will be a slash 24. Then we could go down to the bottom and press save and apply changes. Now we need to do the same thing for our guest network. We'll go to assignments. We'll click on opt8. We'll enable the interface. We'll call it guest. 
We'll give it the static IPv4 and then IPv4 address will be 192.168.30.1 slash 24. We'll save and then we will do the apply changes. Next, we need to set up the DHCP servers for both of these networks. So we'll go to services, DHCP server over to staff and then enable the DHCP server. We'll scroll down below and we need to give it a DHCP range. So I'll give it 192.168.20.10 to 192.168.20.100. And then we'll give it a DNS as well of 1.1.1.1 and then we'll press save. We need to do the same thing for our guest network. So we're going to enable the DHCP server and then give it a range of 192.168.30.10 to 192.168.30.100. Select DNS and then save. So now we have both of these networks created with MPFSense. They won't be able to reach the internet yet because we don't have any firewall rules. So we'll click on firewall, go to rules. We'll click over on our staff network and we could see there's no firewall rules in place. So we'll put in any, any rule just so it could get to the internet. So the action will be passed. Protocol will be any source and destination will be any, any, and we'll press save and apply changes. Now to block inner VLAN routing on our PFSense, I'm going to create an alias. So we'll click on firewall, go to aliases, and then we'll click on add. I'm going to give it the name of RFC 1918. It will be private IP addresses will be the description. And the type is going to be networks. The first network in the RFC 1918 will be 192.168.0.0 slash 16. And then we need to add another network that will be 172.16.0.0 that's slash 12. And the last network will be 10.0.0.0 and that will be slash eight. We need to save and apply the changes. And we need to put that blocking rule above the any any rule. So we'll click on the add with the up arrow. We're going to give it the action of block. It's going to be the staff interface and the protocol will be any. The source is going to be the staff network and the destination is going to be an alias and the alias will be RFC 1918. Scroll to the bottom, press save and then apply changes. We need to do the same thing for the guests as they don't have internet access currently. So we'll select the up arrow add and we'll do a pass. Protocol will be any source destination, any, any and press save and apply changes. Now we need to do that block inner VLAN routing rule for the guest. So the action will be block, protocol will be any, source will be the guest network, destination will be the alias of the RFC 1918, and then we'll press save and apply changes. So now we're pretty much set on our PFSense, we need to go and create networks within our UDM Pro. For the unified configuration, I'm going to be using the classic controller, but you could do the same things in the new controller if you'd like. So we'll click on the settings wheel, we'll go over to networks. Our device management network is created by default on the 192.168.1.0, but we need to create our camera network on 192.168.210.1. So we'll create a new network. I'll call this camera. And it will be on VLAN 210. I'll give it an IP of 192.168.210.1 slash 24, and then we'll update the DHCP range and it's save. Now to get VLAN 20 and VLAN 30 from the PFSense network to work on our Ubiquity network, we need to create VLAN only network. So we'll create new network. It will be VLAN only and the name will be staff. The VLAN will be 20 and we'll press save. The next thing we need to do is our guest network. So we'll create a new network VLAN only, name it guest and give it VLAN 30 and press save. Now I've plugged in my U6 Lite access point and we can see that it's adopting. We need to create some wireless networks for our staff and our guests. So I'll click on the settings wheel. We'll go to wireless networks. We'll create a new wireless network. I'll call it staff. Give it a password of test1234. And then we'll select the network of staff, which is our VLAN 20 and press save. Next, we'll do our guest network. Give it a name of guest, a password of test1234. And then the network will be our guest network and we'll press save. When connecting to the guest or the staff network, as it's a VLAN only network, the PFSense will be handling the firewall rules. So once this access point is adopted, we'll connect on this computer to the staff Wi-Fi network and see if we could reach out to the internet as well as blocking inner VLAN routing. The access point has now adopted into our Unify controller and we could see that I'm on the staff network. If we open up a command line, we could also verify that by typing in ipconfig 
we can see on my wireless adapter i'm getting an ip 192.168.20.1 so let's see if we could hit the internet i'll ping google.ca and you can see that we're getting responses now we need to check to see if we're blocking inner vlan routing so i'll try to ping the gateway of the guest network so ping 192.168.30.1 and we can see that the requests are timing out, which is exactly what we want. Now we need to set the VLAN for the G3 Flex camera. I'll click on the USW Pro 24. Currently the port is disabled. The camera is on port one and we'll select the edit pencil. We'll go to the switch port profile and we'll select the camera network, scroll down and press apply. And I'm just gonna power cycle this so it grabs an IP quicker. Now the camera is booted back up and we could see that it's pending adoption in our protect controller. And it has an IP of 192.168.210.96. I'm gonna connect my computer to the camera network and we should be able to ping the main network at 192.168.1.1 because we haven't put any firewall rules in place on the UDM Pro. Now my PC is on the camera network on 210.87. I should be able to ping the access point on 1.35. Ping 192.168.1.35. And we could see that's going through and we don't want that. So we're gonna put some firewall rules in place so the camera network can't hit our management network. I'll click on the settings wheel in our Unify network controller, and then we'll go to routing and firewall. Then we'll click on firewall and I'm gonna create a group first. This group will be the exact same RFC 1918 group that we did in PFSense. Now under our groups, we're gonna to go to the LAN in. I'm gonna create a new rule. We're gonna allow LAN to all VLANs. The action will be accept. The source address is gonna be a network and it's gonna be of our LAN and the destination is gonna be an address or port group of that RFC 1918 and we'll press save. Now we need to block the inner VLAN routing. So we'll create a new rule. We'll call it block inner VLAN routing. The action will be to drop the source is going to be that RFC 1918 group and the destination is going to be RFC 1918 and we'll press save. Now if we open up a command line we shouldn't be able to hit that access point. And we could see that the requests are now timing out. If we have the block inner VLAN routing turned off we could hit the other VLANs within PFSense as well. So we'll ping 192.168.20.1 and you can see that the requests are going through. So turning this back on does block that inner VLAN routing as well. Now with the rule back on, we'll try to ping 192.168.20.1 again. And we can see that those requests are timing out. That's going to be it for this video. And do I recommend doing this? I absolutely do not. It's pretty well double the amount of work that you need to go through to get your networks up and running and your firewall rules working properly. You also cause yourself double NAT, which if you need to do port forwards or anything like that, you'll have to do it twice and it could just cause some other issues. If you want the advanced features on PFSense like the policy-based routing as well as whole home VPN, I would just sell the UDM Pro, get a cloud key Gen 2 Plus which hosts all of your network controller protect access and talk and do it that way. It will simplify your network a whole lot more. Again, there may be other ways to do this that I don't know. So if you do know, post it in the comments down below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.